Hello Linear Algebra student. This video is for chapter 3.3 part 1, Kramer's Rule. It is um, an application of determinant. So determinant can be used to solve systems of equation. And um, the, uh, the method is called Kramer's Rule. So if we have a matrix uh, n times n system, so this only works if it is an n times n system, you have n equation n unknown is a square system where your coefficient matrix is a square matrix and your system is a x equal to b where a is the coefficient matrix. a is invertible, that means there is unit solution, one unit solution, then the unit solution can be uh, written as hmm, um, each xi is determinant of aib over determinant of a. So it's the ratio of two determinants. And what is aib? aib is replacing the coefficient matrix at the i column by b. Okay, so that is called aib. Sometimes I just call it ai. It's just a matrix with one uh, column being replaced by the constant column B, basically. So here's the proof. Proof is uh, rather involved, um, but to use it, you don't really need to understand the proof, but this is a high level math, so you should try to. So uh, what it was saying is we try to um, um, define a um, matrix. Um, this matrix has um, um, A times I of X. That means you're trying to multiply uh, matrix A with a matrix that is, you know, 1, um, 0, 0, 0, all those, and then 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. But at the I column, you have X1 to Xn. And then, um, of course, you will have 0, 0, 0 at the end is 1. So basically, it's an identity matrix where the xi, uh, the i column, is being replaced by the whole x column. So if you do multiplication this way, you notice that it actually become just a1, right? And then um, the x column, and then a n. Because if you multiply A with the first column, the whole column would just be the A column, the first column of A. And then, oh, oh so this would be A, actually AX. So this would be different, it would be AXI. And, uh, but our equation say AX is equal to B, right? So this is exactly equal to a, AIB. So a matrix that has all the A, um, the O uh, matrix, but this is B. So these two matrix are the same. And then we, um, that means this, this two are the same. And so if I do a determinant on both sides, so this, uh, so this is a, this is a matrix, this is a matrix, so a determinant of A and a determinant of a, a, in the, a, a identity matrix with the uh, I column being replaced by X. And this would just be a determinant of uh, the I column being replaced by B. So if you replace them one, if you evaluate uh, determinant of A, and uh, you you uh, you make a cofactor expansion along the I column, so uh, the I row. On that row, you only have xi. So determinant a times xi will be the determinant of the left hand side of the right hand side, and so xi will be determinant of the left hand side over determinant of a. And you just do cofactor expansion on another row, you would do the same thing. So this is kind of like the proof. Uh, it takes some time to understand it, but <laughs> uh, the important thing is to know how to use it. So let's uh, look at two situations where you are solving this by uh, a Kramer's rule of a 2x2 two two and a 3x3. Three three. Except for the 2x2, two two, uh, which you can calculate by hand, for the 3x3, three three, um, the determinant of A is involved, quite involved, if, it, if there's not a lot of zero. So we'll uh, use the calculator to find each determinant because we have four determinants to work with, basically. 
So to do this, actually, I would do a a first, the coefficient matrix, which is four, three, one, two, and then a one with the b replaced. That would equal to the first column being replaced by six, seven, and the second column is the same. And the second one would be a two. The two, the second column being replaced. The first column is still four, three. So get, you always go back to A and then you look at the first and the second column. And then this would be replayed by six, seven, right? So I have three matrix and I need to do determinant of A. Would equal to uh, four times two, eight, eight minus three is equal to five. This determinant of A, one, B, would equal to 12 minus 7, right? 2 times 6 minus 7, so that's equal to 5. And determinant of a 2b would equal to um, 4 times 7, 28, minus 18, 3 times 6, 18, so equal to 10. So after I calculate the three determinant, then I am going to do write the answer. X1 would be uh, A1B, A1B, not I, A1B over, no, determinant of A1B over determinant of A. So that would be A1 is 5 over 5 is equal to 1. X2 is equal to determinant of A2B because it's the second variable. A to B, which we have, the over determinant of A, which we also have, so it's 10 over 5 is equal to 2. So our answer is x1, x2 is equal to 1, 2. So no row, um, elementary row operation, no matrix multiplication, just determinant. So the same here, so uh, let's say A. A would be a 3 by 3 matrix. 1, negative 1, 3. Uh, 3, 0, 1. And then what? 1, 2, 0, right? Because that's the coefficient 1 and 2, the last column. Uh, this for, for x2, you have 3, 0, 1. And then for the first one, is 1, negative 1, 3. This is a 3. So, and then I do A1, B. That would equal to the first being replaced by 4, 2, 2. And then 3, 0, 1 is the copy, 1, 2, 0. A2, B. Would you go to um, 1, negative 1, 3. Hmm. 4, 2, 2 in the middle. And 1, 2, 0. A three B would you go to one negative one three um three zero one but for four two two right for the third one. So and then we need to use the calculator to find the determinant of A which is one negative one three three zero one one two zero. Is it one two zero? So I got that, and then determinant of A is 15. And then I need to replace the first one by 4 to 2. So I just do 4, 2, 2, and determinant of that is 6. So this determinant of A1B is equal to 6. Determinant of A2B would we place the second one by 4, 2, 2, and then put the, this back for 1, negative 1, 3 first, no, 3, 1, negative 1, 3, but then the middle will replace it by 4, 2, 2, 4, oopsie, 4, 2, oop, 2, 2, so that's 12, terminate 12, and then the third one is a determinant of A3B. That would equal to the last one. So I replace this by 301 first, right? Get it back to the original A, 301, and then 422. 
the last one. There, the determinant is 18. Um, so I'm ready to solve it. X1 would be a determinant of A1B over determinant of A. Oh, that is equal to 6 over 15 divided by 3 is 2 over 5. Ready. X2 is determinant of uh, A2B over determinant of A. That is equal to uh, 2 over 15. And that's it. No simplifying. X3 would be determinant of A3. B over determinant of A. Determinant of A3 is 18. 18 over 15 is 6 over 5. And there I have three solutions. So we can say, uh, summarize it as in a vector format. 2 over 5, 2 over 15, 6 over 5. Is the solution answer. So this is the Kramer's rule. Is um, the answer for x i is so the ratio of two indeterminate. Um, so the next topics we're going to talk about is inverse formula. Uh, in chapter two, on two, I think we talk about the inverse formula for a two by two matrix. You can actually write it out, which is determinant of the matrix, and then swap a and b a and d and then do the opposite of cd so we're doing the same thing but we never had a formula for a three by three other than using the calculator to find the inverse right we know it is the determinant is one over the original of the inverse but um what is the whole write-up so it turns out that the inverse formula is one over the determinant of a and then have all these cofactors factors of A. Cofactors of A are actually the uh, determinant with um, IJ or JI being crossed out. Okay, so let's look at an example. So to write the inverse for 2, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 4, 3, 1, negative 2, first of all, I want to find a determinant of A, which is 14, and then I'm going to do C11, which is the cofactor. C11 is um, um, is a positive number, and then I cross out two row the row that that the uh, the row and column having a one one. So I cross out this two, so I have to do the determinant of negative one one four negative two. C one two is cross out this one. So cross out the row and the column, so I do a determinant of one 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 negative two. C one three is to cross out the first row in the last column. So I have to do the determinant of 1, negative 1, 1, 4. And uh, we, because it's a cofactor, we have those positive, negative, positive checker box things. And then, so we have, you find all of them. You find every single one, cross out the row and the column, and then do a cofactor determinant. And then we'll build a matrix from these. Now, but you don't copy out an answer. You So you, you do it in row, right? But then when you copy the, we call it the adjoint of A we copy uh, in column form, Me, mainly i and j. So so if I have c12 is not here, c, c12 is, c21 is here. So it belongs here. So this is c12. So it's not that, but you put c12 here in a vertical form. Right, you can see negative 2, 3, 5 is here. 14, negative 7, negative 7. So this is called the joint of A. You put it uh, next to the multiply with the determinant, and that is the inverse. Um, so for the most part, I didn't even assign it as a homework question, but you need to know that there is such uh, procedures available where you can do an inverse by hand. Okay. The next theorem is uh, the use of determinant again to find area of a parallelogram. If you have two uh, vectors, um, they could be from starting from zero out, two vectors. And then if you add them, you would have a third vertex. And this vertex would be would form a parallelogram because of the parallelogram law. If the third vertex, the fourth, the first vertex is not in the origin, you can um, move everything to the origin. So you would get the same, um, um, you know, 
mais un vacte 